All right, hey folks, welcome to Tesla Northwest and EVs. I know I've been threatening this for a few weeks and I'm finally getting around to it. Let's talk about, after you've installed a EVSE, electrical vehicle servicing equipment or charger, what do you do to make sure that it's still working well? So we're gonna go through and I'm gonna show you some things you can check after you've had one for oh, six months or so, a year, however long, you can go back and make sure that everything is still working all right. And I'm also gonna talk about why it's so important that you do this. So we'll catch you on the flip side. We'll take the panel cover off and we'll do some other cool stuff. Okay, folks, so why in the world do you need to check your electrical vehicle servicing equipment or EVSEs? Well, let me tell you why. It is probably the number one biggest load in your house. In fact, when you're charging your car, likely your power is being, you're using more power than probably both of your neighbor's houses on either side of you at the same time. Now, how can I put that into a picture for you? Well, imagine you have 11 microwave ovens, just like the one in your house, in your kitchen, but instead of just one, you've got 11 of them. Those are each 1,000 watts. So now we're talking 11 kW, 11,000 watts. Imagine all 11 of those microwaves plugged into a single outlet in your kitchen and then running for six hours. That's the kind of power we're talking. 11 and a half kilowatts for my setup is just like running 11 microwaves all at the same time, all in the same outlet. It's a huge amount of power. And what happens when you pull that much power? You get heat and heat is what causes a lot of our problems. So let's go and see how we can identify and maybe make sure our chargers are working correctly or even your electrician or you are installing them correctly. So first thing we wanna do, we wanna take our panel cover off and I've already taken two screws out. Remember, everybody's panel is gonna be a little different. You want to be careful and be prepared. You might have to wiggle it a little bit and support it. So we're gonna be very careful taking our cover off we get our screws out. Mine happens to have four. And as you can see, I'm supporting it and now I'm lifting it straight out. And there you go, folks. Now we've got our panel exposed. And where am I at? Well, I know that this is my breaker right here. I'm using a 60 amp two pole breaker at 240 volts. So now I wanna make sure that I'm working safe. I've got my multimeter here. I'm set to the correct AC voltage and I'm gonna just make sure my meter's working. So I'm gonna take and put it on the two poles and I'm gonna see that I have 240 volts. Good, that's what I want. Now I'm gonna turn it off and I'm gonna verify no power. I'm gonna turn it back on, verify my meter again. Good, my meter's working. And now I'm gonna turn it off one last time and double check and we have no power there. So safety first, very, very good. So why did I go through all that? Well, our two wires here that lead out to my charger, they're gonna get hot every time you charge your car. They're gonna expand and contract and these connections can become loose. So I'm gonna get in here and I'm just gonna make sure uh, they're still tight. I got a little bit of juice on both of these. Yep, okay, good. So now I've checked those, they're tight and they're looking good. Now, some of the equipment you might want to use when you're installing an EVSC. Number one, never, ever, ever use aluminum wire. Why? Aluminum wire expands 30% or 30 times the amount of copper. What does that mean? Every time it's getting hot, it's expanding. Every time it's cooling off, it's contracting. And those posts are getting loose. So copper, copper, copper. You're going to want to check your ampacity tables in the National Electrical Code. That is going to be 310.16. The wire I'm using, this is what's known as metal clad 63. You don't count the ground. So I have three conductors in here. This is rated at 75 amps at 90 degrees Celsius. Great stuff. And as you can see, I don't have to use conduit. I can run it right on the wall because it's already protected. So we have tightened our connections and made sure that those are good. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna check our other splices. Another important thing to remember about electrical vehicle chargers, you want as few splices as possible because every place you have a splice is a place where you can get a failure. Again, that wire getting hot, expanding, contracting, and over time loosening, and then something bad happens and you have a fire. So 
We always want to be checking this stuff. Now we're going to move on to our next splice. So I'll catch you on the flip side as we move to a different panel. All right, hey there folks. So here is the second splice in my setup. The first place was where I landed on the breaker. And mind you, that breaker is a industrial grade, high, uh, high dollar breaker. You don't want to buy anything cheap when you're doing this. When I made these splices here, I used what's known as a split bolt. These are fantastic. They give you a very strong connection. They don't tend to come loose over time. And then you can just tape them up and cover them. And we are going to be able to check these. That's why I have this cover off with a handy dandy tool. And I'm gonna grab that for you. Most people, or at least most industrial facilities, they use what's known as FLIR, forward looking infrared or infrared thermography to check their connections. And in fact, I was a certified level one infrared thermographer. I went to LA for a week and did it. So I kind of know what I'm talking about. So when we go and inspect things in industrial facilities, we're going to be using an infrared camera to check for hot spots. Well, most people can't afford that. So if you head over to Harbor Freight, or you can spend a little more, get a nice fluke one, a temperature gun works awesome. And I'm going to show you how this works in just a moment. But I highly recommend you get one of these to help you inspect your splices. And then finally, when I added this box, it's so if I lose or no longer have my Tesla charger, I could put in a 50 amp outlet and then I can have versatility here. That's why I did the box the way I did. But if you do put in a 50 amp outlet, you want to buy the high quality ones. This one here is from Bryant. It's a $40 outlet that I got off Amazon. Look how robust the connections are. You got a ceramic block back here. Very, very well constructed, heavy duty. I got this one at Lowe's. This is an Eaton, or excuse me, Leviton, all plastic. Look how crappy and flimsy that is. Would you want this to carry 240 volts at 50 amps or this? Again, check what you're buying and talk to your electrician. Make sure they're buying high grade material. So finally, folks, we know about this splice. I got it exposed and ready for us to test. Let's come around the front here. And we can see our Tesla EVSE, or Tesla charger. Now that has four screws that secure it. I've already removed those, and we can pop this straight off. And now we can see our connections here. Now why would I do that? Well, first I'm going to inspect these blades. I'm going to make sure there's no discoloration or problems. Oop, your wig with uh, connections. Those look good. If they were discolored, I might have some concern, right? But those aren't. Next, I'm gonna have my Torx 25. It's the same screw size to remove these as our connections here. Now remember, I've checked my breaker for no power, so I'm safe to check this and I'm gonna tighten these again. I'm gonna make sure that they are still at the torque specs that I expect them to be. And they are, those didn't move at all. Those are torqued perfectly well. So we can go ahead and put this back on. I've checked this connection for tightness, it's good. I've checked the breaker connection for tightness, it's good. And I've got my splices exposed, so I'm ready to do the final bit of inspections. So I'm gonna catch you on the flip side and we're gonna talk about checking temperatures. All right, hey, welcome back. So, so far we've covered making sure our connections are tight in our panel. We've made sure that we've checked our splices We've looked at our EVSC on the outside and those connections, and we've made sure everything was tight. We've talked about why it's important to buy good quality equipment, why you don't want to use uh, aluminum wire. And in fact, a lot of people probably don't realize this, but if your home was built in the 60s, 70s, or 80s, likely your dryer and your range are wired up using aluminum wire. So it's not a bad idea to maybe check those outlets too. Over 20, 30 years, 40 years, they can get real loose. But I digress. So now we're moving on to how can we check our equipment? And maybe we don't want to get in and be as intrusive as I've been. Well, as I said, get yourself a handy dandy temperature gun. These things are great. We're gonna turn our power back on. Our breaker is now engaged. And we can see that I'm gonna just do a quick test. And we can see that we're looking at about, oh, 71 degrees ambient is the temperature. So now I'm gonna test my wire connection here and I see 69, and my wire connection here, and I see 70. Now, I should expect to see an ambient temperature. Why? I'm not pulling any current right now. Remember, 
These are only gonna get hot once current flows. So nothing's gonna happen as long as I'm not plugged in. Let's move over here. We're gonna, again, get a temperature reading on our splices. And we can see ambient and ambient. Now, this is a really good thing to test the first time you get your charger installed. I didn't do that, I'm a dumbass. I should have. Why? You wanna set a baseline. You write those numbers down. So ambient, ambient, everything's good. Now we're gonna plug the car in. We're gonna let it start pulling a current and we're gonna come out here and check in about 15 minutes to see if our temperatures have changed. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for crazy high temperatures. We're looking for temperature imbalances. Maybe red is 30 degrees hotter than black. Or maybe both of these are smoking hot. We wanna look for anything that seems anomalous. If they're coming up to the same temperature at about the same rate, that's awesome. And if they hold that temperature over a long time, that's good too. So we're gonna check those both with our temperature gun here again in about 15 minutes at our breaker and at our splice. But first, let's get the car plugged in. Let's get it pulling some juice. Okay. Wake up, honey. <laughs> there we go. Okay, car is plugged in. And we are charging. So, car has, oh, about two hours to charge. We're looking at 247 volts and rocking up to our 48 amps. So we'll check back in 15 minutes, folks, and we'll do a temperature check. Thank you. Hey there, folks. Okay, so it has been about 15 minutes. We've been charging the car on full power, so that's 240 volts at 48 amps, so 11 and a half kilowatt. And if you'll notice, I have a 60 amp breaker here. Why is 60 amp when the charger is max rated at 48? Well, that's because the code, the National Electrical Code, again, you wanna be making sure your electrician is following this, or you are, uh, tells you that you need to derate your continuous loads by 25%. Your charger is a continuous load. It's on for a long time, so you have to derate it. So that means a 60 amp breaker can only pull 48 amps. And if you'll remember, my wire is rated at over 75 amps at 90 degrees Celsius, which is almost boiling point of water. So very good. We're gonna take a test here now. We've got our handy dandy temperature gun and we're gonna shoot our connection and we are at 91 degrees, okay? Remember we started off ambient at 70 and on this one here, oh, this one's still creeping up. Let me get in there a little bit. About 75, okay? So we've got about 80 degrees and 75. That doesn't bother me too bad, but we're gonna keep an eye on it. We're gonna come back and check this in an hour. Now let's come over and check these splices. And remember, this isn't a real high accuracy uh, test piece of test equipment. All this is doing is giving me a generally good idea if my wires are heating up uniformly and staying about a uniform heat. They're not going to give me an exact number. Now let's check this guy. 81.8, so that's about a 10 degree rise. And this one here is at... 78, so about a 10 degree rise. So these are both at about the same temperature, and my two wires over there are close. We're gonna check them again in an hour. So again, handy dandy temperature gun. Just give it some time. You gotta have current running, and then you can check your temperatures. The first time you put a charger in, like I said, this is a good way of getting a baseline. So I'm taking a baseline now, even though I've had this for six months. So we're gonna come back here in about an hour. We're gonna check these again, and hopefully they'll have gotten to the top and leveled off and not get any hotter. But we'll find out. So we'll check you on the flip side, folks. And thanks again for joining me at Tesla Northwest and EVs. I would love it if you'd hit that subscribe. We do all kinds of crazy stuff around here. All right, hey folks, welcome back. So it has been just a little over an hour and we are gonna do one last check and see if there are any problems with our wiring. So first we're gonna check our panel. We got our handy dandy heat gun and I'm going to shoot right in where it is. And we're seeing 100 degrees on red and I'm seeing about 80 degrees on black. So there's a, now about a 20 degree temperature delta between the two legs. 
not a huge problem, but it is something I definitely want to keep an eye on. And in fact, if I shoot up a little further into the breaker, I can see uh, on the red phase, again, 100 degrees inside my breaker and about 80 on my black phase. So it's actually progressing. So it could be the breaker has a little bit of a crappy connection on the inside on that phase, or my connection could be just a little bit loose. So what do you do when you want to make a repair? Number one, do not do it hot. That is ridiculous. Don't get a screwdriver, no matter how cool or awesome you think you are, and go in here and tighten this while there is power. On top of that, you don't want to do it hot as in temperature-wise. So what would I do to repair this? I would shut the power off. I'd let the panel sit for 35, 40 minutes. I'd come in with my temperature gun, and I would check to make sure it was ambient, whatever ambient temperature is, 70 degrees currently right now and then I would tighten up my connection. And why would I do it when it's cold or at ambient temperature? Well, again, when it gets hot, it expands. So if you're tightening against a hot, expanded piece of metal, what's gonna happen when it cools off? It's gonna get a little bit looser. So you wanna make sure you effectuate any repairs when the power is off and the breakers are cool. And so this one, I'm gonna make a note of, and when I come back and check this in six months, I'm gonna see if it's um, still about the same or if it's gotten worse. And if it's gotten worse, then I'll probably look at probably replacing the breaker and again, checking my connections and my torques. So panel, I'm pretty happy with. I do have a note for next time and we've talked about that. Let's go over here and check this other splice that I've got. And again, we wanna have as few splices as possible. So I've got these two guys right here. So we're gonna check our black phase and I'm getting 86 degrees. And on red, I'm getting about 88. So those are both in a nice, even temperature range. There's not a lot of delta between them. And so that is just fine. So this connection here is good. I'll put the cover back on and we'll call everything checked. So that folks is how you can check your EVSE and know, hey, did my electrician do a good job? Did I do a good job? And has anything happened in the, um, uh, the time between installation and use? And like I said, it's been about six months and I will do this probably again in six months and then after that annually. And now I've got a baseline, so that's a good thing too. I hope this helped everybody. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments. Again, why am I qualified to do this? Well, I, have a journey, I was a journeyman 01 electrician. I was an 07 maintenance electrician, 20 years in oil refining, and I teach at the Bellingham Technical College this very subject. So thank you again, have a wonderful day, and please hit that like and subscribe for more of this awesome content, Tesla, Northwest, and EVs. Catch you on the flip side.